We hear a lot of perspectives on the Mankind Podcast. Inclusion of a guest is not an endorsement of their views, and the opinions expressed here do not always represent the mission or values of the Mankind Project USA. Looks like the rain has gone. What's up, guys, gals, and non-binary pals? Happy Pride Month, and welcome to the Mankind Podcast, the show where we break the molds of modern manhood to prove there's more than just one way to be a man. We break a lot of things around here. Uh, this morning, my keyboard. Not uh, uh, The absence of caffeine can do that, I tell you. <laughs> uh, but I'm so pleased and excited to bring this episode to you. I don't know if you listening have ever been impacted by bullying whether you were bullied or the one who bullied this uh this conversation today with guest writer for the huff post robbie romu i believe is going to give some really powerful insights into not just what happens to those who become bullied but why we have those in our lives that feel like they need to bully throw their weight around and hurt others you know robbie's story was uh beautifully told in his article that uh, was featured on the Huff Post. I was a school bully. Here's why I terrorized my classmates. And in it, he tells his story of how secretly knowing that he was homosexual as a child, uh, he knew that in his small community in Canada, that could get him hurt, that could get him terrorized, that could even get him killed. And we're talking 40 years ago. So all those were very likely. I don't know, still happens today, but not in the scale that it was happening back then. And He talks about how his fear led to him then becoming the perpetrator, becoming the bully, becoming the one who terrorized others. So I believe that you're really going to enjoy this interview if you either have been impacted by bullies, if you have been the one who's been the perpetrator, because it talks about not just redemption. We talk about not just how to overcome the trauma of being bullied or having been a bully. We really speak about what causes those to bully, what causes those to cause harm to others. And it really does speak to the old adage that hurt people hurt people. So that's enough from me. I hope you guys get a ton of value out of this conversation with Robbie Romer. Enjoy. G'day and welcome to the Mankind Podcast, another live recording to the show where we break the molds of modern manhood to prove that there's more than just one way to be a man. I'm your host, Brandon Clift, and today we are joined by Robbie Romu, who is a guest writer for the Huffington Post, whose recent article uh, popped up on our page. It was shared, it was liked and seen by many of you. And his his story of, of redemption, in a way, personal redemption from his life as a childhood bully, I think can give us many insights as to why we harm others, why, why we choose to, uh, you know, basically why there are bullies in the world. (laughs) Now, as a former bully myself, as someone who has been bullied many times, uh, the article really drew me in. And, you know, I think it's a really great telling, Robbie, of the internal journey of a bully, not just the external, but you do a really great job in your writings of combining it all together. So of course, many of you watching live right now haven't read the article. So Robbie, mate, take a moment to introduce yourself and mate, give us some context to the article. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, first of all, let me say thank you so much for uh, having me on the show. Um, I think the work that you're doing uh, with the Mankind Project is extraordinary and really very valuable. So thank you so much for having me. Um, so I'm Robbie. I'm uh, a freelance writer. I live in uh, Vancouver, beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. And um, yeah, I'm the guy that wrote the article about being a high school bully. So I wanted to put this out there to the world to talk about the other side of the coin because we often uh, hear about the well, the person who's being bullied. We hear their story a lot, but we don't often hear from the perspective of the bully. So it began um, in grade six when I was 11 years old and uh, I was having a wrestling match with um, one of my classmates who was a guy who was, uh, you know, 
a little more developed than the rest of the boys in the class. So during this wrestling match, he had me pinned to the ground and I got an erection. And this to me was this uh, moment of revelation uh, and pure fear because I suddenly knew that I was gay. Now, having said that, I knew what gay was. I knew sort of what that meant, but I didn't know it was me. And so in that moment, I was like, oh my God, this is a disaster. So, so all, of, all of the negative, like to give cultural context, like for that time, that era, all of the negative assumptions and, and, and stereotypes associated with homosexuality just boom, just hit you. Yes. And this is uh, 40 years ago. So, I mean, that was, it was a different time. And I knew instantly that um, my life was over. And I say that like, because I knew that being gay was something that could get me killed. I knew that being gay was something that would get me beaten up, would get me ostracized and uh, my life would just be hell. And I knew this because I knew people in my immediate circle, in my immediate family that were bullied. And I decided uh, very quickly that that wasn't going to happen to me. So uh, I, you know, I made a choice in that moment to become the bully instead of being uh, the bullied. Survival mechanism. Yes. Is, uh, it's that, that natural alpha trait of, well, in the status, like if there was a hierarchy which of, uh, you know, of, of power where people have greater privileges than others, of course, men, straight white men, let's put them at the top. Yes. Put women below that, put homosexuals below that, put trans, right? Yeah. The, these, these kind of rungs on the ladder that, uh, uh, that my, my friend Jeff Pereira talks about and that we use these rungs on the ladder to assert ourselves. So you probably remember what it was like prior to that incident gay bashing, right? Being a part of the jokes. I certainly was Yeah. as a, as a stance. It was kind of a way to plan a stance to say like, well, if, you know, homosexuals, if being homosexual is a form of, of lower status, then, well, I'm not. So I'm above that, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I also had an older brother who was a very mm, uh, macho guy. He was king of the hill. You know, he was right. the tough guy. He was the, you know, the ringleader of his group of friends and kind of mm. ran the school and ran our house, you know? And sure. so I saw how successful that could be in not, not being the victim. Mm. And so I emulated that behavior uh, because I saw that it worked. Mm. And um, so, yeah, I immediately changed my circle of friends. I immediately got a girlfriend because, you know, if you have a girlfriend, you can't be gay. <laughs> um, and what, you know, the result of this was that I, everything about me changed really. I was a good kid. I was a happy kid. I was smart. I mean, I still am smart, but I was, you know, I did well in school, let's say, um, was in an advanced class, had great grades, got along with everybody. And almost overnight, uh, everything changed. I shut, I just shut completely down because I was so afraid of being seen, mm. of somebody finding this uh, terrible thing out about me. Yeah. And, 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 in fact, I think it was Mike, right? The boy that you were wrestling with. Yeah. He actually didn't tell anyone about it. And so you thought, all right, well, you can get the first hit in. Yeah. You know, and, and, and turned it around, right? I think about, I think about that a lot. I, mm. I, I, I say this in the article too. I don't understand why he never struck first, like why he didn't immediately tell people and, you know, use that to his advantage because that's the system that I grew up in. Mm. That was like, you had to have some kind of power over somebody else to not be the victim. 
Right. And so when he didn't, I struck immediately and I turned the whole thing around on him and uh, told everybody that it was, oh, I'm very sorry. You're fine. Sorry. Hey, we, we, we got a chance to hear a Canadian say sorry. That's, it's always. It's <laughs> oh, always. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll hear it again. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I turned the whole thing around on him and it basically turned his life into, you know, hell instead of mine and uh yeah you know one of the things i want to say is like um in many of the comments and and feedback that i've got from the article a lot of the um a lot of it's been about um me looking for redemption or me trying to, to uh forgive myself or me trying to find a way out of this and it's not it's not about that at all you know it, 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 you know I think part of it's a failure for me to communicate my message properly but it, it's more about um understanding that behavior and trying to find a way for it not to happen anymore like I don't I, I don't need forgiveness from Mike and I don't need forgiveness from the other people that I bully but I need forgiveness for myself. And so this process of putting this out there and, and sharing it with the world is about finding forgiveness for myself and also letting other people know that this situation happens. And, and, and if someone is out yeah. there feeling this, then they're not alone and maybe they can mm -hmm. then find a way out. That, yeah, that's an interesting distinction that you're making because it's so it's so natural when we have these moments, right, of, of kind of coming home I hear a lot of men in the Mankind Project call it coming home, right? Coming home to ourselves that we want to use these experiences, these revelations, these ahas as a model for others Yes, to be able to do the same. But oftentimes from the outset, it can look like I did this horrible thing, but I'm trying to redeem myself. Woe is me. Support yes. me. But, but that's not what it's about not for you. Attention. Yeah, for sure. No, it's like you've got your own journey, right? Your own healing that you're the process that you're a part of. Yes. The outside stuff is, is really, it's up to the exterior. It's up to those out there to come to peace with it themselves. You can be, you can play a role in that. Yeah. Right. In that journey, but it's, but it's not your job either. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting discussion because, I talk about in the article about um, thinking about or wanting to reach out to some of the people that I hurt mm -hmm. and um, if that will offer them some kind of peace or some kind of healing if I called them or texted them or whatever and said, hey, this is what happened. Here's the situation. I'm really, really sorry for what I did. Um, and a lot of the um, emails that I got from people were, about that like from one extreme to the other you know you have to do this it's essential and then some people were like you know i've had my bully reach out to me and it made no difference in my life at all and all these kind of uh variances in between mm -hmm. and i've decided that i think it is an important thing so there are people that i am currently looking up that I'm going to reach out to and not for me again, not, not to, it doesn't, I, it's not to make myself feel better. It's to, if they have some kind of unresolved pain, which they probably do because this, you know, it's not a fun thing to be bullied, right? It's a horrible thing. So if I can offer them maybe some kind of uh, peace or, or perspective, then I think that that's a honorable thing to do. Yeah, I believe so too. And and what it does is it puts the ball in their court, yes. right? It, it's saying it's saying you know what I I can own up to my actions, uh, I can own the impact of those actions. But you know what I I can only meet you halfway on this, right? Right. Anything past that is going it, it is really attaching to outcomes that may never happen, right? May never be possible. In a way, you can only be you know, aware of the outcome of you just going, well, you know what? I did my best to reconcile. Yeah. And you can't guarantee the outcome of, of, of reaching out. Right. 
yeah and and to not be afraid of um a a negative reaction and to own that and be like mm. that's okay like it's okay for you know it's okay i can i can hold that and i can be okay with myself in that and allow this for you to release some of your pain you know that was the most astounding process in this is the the amount of emails that i got from people who were bullied or who mm. were bullies in their time mm. and how they said how uh, you know that this was a really healing article for them to read because they never stopped or never had the time or didn't look at it from the other person's perspective and i thought you know first of all when when i started to, <laughs> when i started to get these emails it was absolutely like overwhelming just these this outpouring of generosity and love and these mm -hmm stories that people were telling me that were so incredibly personal and I had this breakdown of sorts of this imposter syndrome I'm like who am I I am just a guy who made a lot of mistakes and I'm trying to you know mm -hmm. help the world a little bit or help a little bit and these stories just kept coming in and I had to actually take a couple of days off from reading them because I was owning it. I was taking it on. And, yes. and then I realized, wait, <laughs> my responsibility here was to write this article mm. for myself and for whoever needed to see it. And when I put it out there, that was the kind of the end of my responsibility in this. And then the reader had their responsibility, which was to read it and then to write me if they felt so compelled, mm. right? But that relationship at that point can end, right? It, mm. it doesn't have to be anything more than that. And that was a really important lesson for me because it started to get very overwhelming with these stories. Yeah. Uh, I'm so happy you share that. Uh, I resonate with that personally as well. Ever since starting originally with uh, Mars Off Monday and now the Mankind podcast, I get a lot of people reaching out to me that want to share their stories. And, and I write back for the most part, but then I, I find that I can become a dumping ground for people to just emotionally dump. And I need to kind of put up my boundaries and say, hey, I'm not the person for you to do that. Right. Um, thank you for sharing your experience, but I'm not the haven or the solace that you're looking for, for these things. Uh, yeah. There are men's groups for that. <laughs> there are communities yeah. that will hold you and will hold your heart through your healing process. So, I mean, what a valuable lesson alone this article has given you is the ability to kind of put up those boundaries and say, well, you know what? I see you, I hear you, but I don't own your feelings. <laughs> Especially the, the ones that are, <laughs> part of me thinks that, there's a lot of people out there that never got a chance to tell their bully a lot of things that they probably really wanted or need to say to them. And so they took this opportunity to use me, right, as that person so they could vent this mm. stuff. And that's great. Like, I don't, honestly, yeah. I'm thankful that they have this yeah. opportunity. Um, but then you're right. There's a, there's a line there where you have to say, but that's, you know, that's not me. Right. So textbook projection. Yeah. Uh, it was, it, it was it's a, just, yeah. Incredible learning uh, opportunity for me in that regard. Yeah. For I, sure. You know, the, 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 I got many emails from um, educators who said, I'm sharing this with my school principal. I'm sharing this with my guidance counselors and the other teachers here. I got many emails from um, mothers who said, when my kids get home, I'm sitting them down and I'm reading this to them. And that to me was the, the power behind speaking your truth. That to me is, you know, not being afraid to talk about the uh our you know our lumpy stuff let's say and putting it out there into the world because 
that's opening up dialogue. That's opening up conversation. That's showing a four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 year old kid that, Hey, there's another Avenue. There's another way to look at this. And that's all that I wanted to do. That's all that I, that's all the article for me was about. Mm. I love where you talk about how um, no one, people were witnessing your decline with uh, attention at school, your grades, yeah. right? They, they saw you isolate, but really what they were witnessing was the acts, right? That you, the bullying that you were, yes. that you were committing. And you said, no one stopped to ask you what was going on. Right. Now it's natural. When I see the bullies in the world, I see them as the victim. Uh, not as the victim. Sorry. My bad. I see them as the villain Yes, in the story. And I want them to lose because, I mean, that's the story yeah. structure that we've been raised on. So do I. Stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good guys, bad guys, yeah. the bully For sure. uh, will rue the day, right? Yes. But in many ways, a lot of, a lot of bullies were once victims, are currently victims. And yeah. it's natural to not want to show compassion for them, whether it's from personal experiences of being bullied. Um, why do you feel like it's important to, to ask bullies what's going on for them and, you know, why they behave in a certain way. Yeah. I mean, it would have, I, I, I kind of um, go two ways on this because I don't know that I was ready at the time to talk about what was going on. If someone had asked me, right. Sure. Mm. I probably wouldn't have because I was still, I was in such a fear-based place, mm. but even just knowing that someone cared in some way would have been remarkable to me. And bullies aren't bullies for no reason. There is always, there's something going on behind that yeah. curtain. There's something going on behind the scenes, whether, you know, my situation is because I was gay and afraid, right? Yeah. But that's not everybody's situation. Yeah. Some kids are, you know, they have a, a terrible home life. There's something going on at home. There's abuse happening to them. There's so many different things that are going on behind the scenes that is causing this behavior to manifest. And so we need to find out why. Why, why are we talking? Why are we having this conversation? Yeah. They're human beings. Not like we're, you know, we're human beings too. These are hurt kids who are hurting others, but Yes, let's definitely have compassion for the, the victims. Absolutely. That's mm -hmm. very, very, very important, obviously. But there needs to be compassion for the other side as well. They're, they're just, you know, because that's a hurting kid who mm -hmm. can, you know, maybe just a, yeah. a, a, a gentle conversation or a, yeah. I care about you, how can I help you, would change everything rather quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that old adage, hurt people hurt people. Yes, you know, again, one of the things that came at me from uh, the article and from the emails and comments was, you know, lots of gay people grow up gay and don't bully people, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm not trying to use being gay as the excuse for my behavior. It's just my situation. Um, but in the, in the context of writing this article, I can only talk about so many things you know, without getting too deep into it, that there are other things going on, were other things going on in my life. You know, I had a um, difficult childhood outside of being gay. So all of that kind of manifested into this tough guy persona that was like, I'm not going to get hurt anymore. I've had enough of this. And so I'm just going to hurt. It was a kill or be killed world. That's what I understood. That's what I knew. And again, in context, this was 40 years ago. I pray all the time, every day, that it's better for mm -hmm. young kids out there now. And I think it is in big cities. But in these little cities, you know, I grew up in the middle of nowhere. And mm -hmm. I imagine it's still pretty rough. Yeah. I want to ask you, Robbie, if you could wave a magic wand, right? Mm -hmm. And you could see like the ultimate impact that your, your work, your writings could have on the world what would that be um um you know i decided when i was 
about 10 years ago, I was 42, when I, I was unhappy in my job. And, and I always knew I kind of wanted to be a writer. And I just said, that's enough. I, I just have to do this, you know? And I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, throw my, I'm going to throw my shit against the wall <laughs> and see what sticks. And I'm not going to hide anymore. And so mm. I just want people to talk. Look, I think that people have mental illness. People have depression. People have so many hidden things that we keep close to our heart because we're afraid of being judged. We're afraid of shame. We're afraid of how other people are going to react to us. But keeping it to ourselves, all this does is make us feel completely alone, right? Yeah. We feel like we're the only ones who feel this way. We're the only ones who hurt, right? But if we talk about it, if we have a conversation, and I've learned this through doing it, right? And I'm sure you've learned this from your show in life. Everybody feels these things. And all of a sudden, you look around and you're like, wow, I'm not alone in this. And there's such strength in that. There's such strength in, in solidarity. And there's such strength in like opening up and, and admitting, you know, that mm -hmm. I'm weak sometimes. I cry sometimes, you know, I hurt mm -hmm. sometimes. And it's okay. It's so normal. And so I just want people to talk. All I want my legacy, I don't say legacy, I don't know. All I want is for conversations to start. Honestly, I just want people to feel less alone. That's because mm. it's hard. That's a hard life. And I guarantee you, if you are feeling something that is that you've kept to yourself and it's hurting you, I guarantee you that if you open up to somebody that you love and trust, that they're going to be kind and they're going to listen and you're going to feel better about it. Mm. You know, it, I could go on and on, but. <laughs> well, mate, it sounds like, it sounds like your vision that you're painting is very much aligned with our mission at the mankind project and, and, and with this podcast as well. And, you know, if we can normalize these conversations, these, these very taboo, uncomfortable subjects, uh, personal experiences that there'll be a lot less isolation yeah. for sure. And, and to know that people aren't alone yeah. in what they're going through as hard as it is to see that when you're in it, to know that, Hey, there are people out there that can, that can help hold your hand and hold your heart as you go through whatever reconciliation it is that you need to be able to own the person you see in the mirror. Yeah. So mate, I, I honor you for, uh, you know, for being a part of this process, for, for writing the way that you do. I mean, Huffington Post, that's, it's not like that gets a couple of casual readers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, yeah, my editor sent me uh, right before he was going to post the, the article. He, he sent me a, a small email that said, are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, you've never asked me that before about one of my articles, you know? Yeah. And it's like, no, this is something different. This is, you're going to get... You know, this is going to be big. And I did. I stopped. And I was like, wow, if he thinks that this is going to be, maybe I shouldn't do this. Yeah. But then, you know, it was just, it was the, took me, it's the article that took me the longest to write. And it was the hardest article that I've ever put out into the world, but absolutely the most rewarding experience. Well, mate, I'll tell you what, we get to benefit from that as well. So, mate, thank you for, for being bold enough and brave enough to, to share your story with us today, to share it on the Huff Post. And, mate, keep doing what you're doing. You've got an ally in me. And uh, so, mate, keep up the amazing work. Uh, for those of you that have joined us live, thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for sharing this video. And just thank you for willing being willing to contribute to these conversations again a lot of these conversations aren't easy but they are necessary so that we can break the molds of modern manhood to prove that there's more than just one way to be a man so mate any final thoughts feelings that you want to share before we wrap up just thank you really i appreciate uh, again what you're doing um it's just we need more of these we need more people who are doing projects like you guys are doing we need more of this and uh 
Thank you so much for having me. This has been the Mankind Podcast produced in association with the Mankind Project USA. I have been your host, Brandon Clift, and I personally want to thank our guests for joining us today and imparting their wisdom from their experiences in this amazing journey called life. And of course, I want to thank you, the listener, because through your attention and your support, you make it a heck of a lot easier for us to let men out there in the world know that they are not alone and that there is more than one way to be a man. Special thanks, of course, goes to my incredible team, Marketing and Communications Director Boyson Hodson, Producer and Editor of this episode, Michael Russo, who makes me sound so much more intelligent than I actually am. So, of course, special kudos goes there. And if you've been enjoying the music throughout this episode and all of our episodes, check out Jim Donovan and the Sun King Warriors. I have links to them in the show notes. Now, the fee for this episode is simple. If you found gold and insights that you believe could benefit your loved ones and those you care about, be sure to share it with them. And of course, remember that life doesn't happen to us. It happens for us. So long as we rip the pen out of fate's hand and become the author of our own story. So my friend, pick up the pen and we'll see you next week. Lots of love.